So this is a mini lecture on persecution. Um, I had mentioned earlier this morning that persecution um, was not really a widespread systematic operation except for maybe a couple of times. And even then it was largely up to the local governor um, who would be persecuted and, and by what means and how much. We do have some evidence of people like Pliny writing to Trajan to ask for advice and that gives us a little bit of an insight if you have a read of the Bedinson document um, you can see that exchange between those two. But for this video I just want to highlight one in particular uh, we use the language of martyr, those who die for their belief, those who die for their faith. And one that I would like to highlight now is um, the martyrdom of Perpetua and Felicity. Uh, it's PowerPoint slide number 88 if you want to have a look at a picture of these two ladies. The reason I've chosen them is uh, a, few, uh, a few reasons why. One is um, the description that we have of their martyrdom is, is quite extensive. Um, it's quite detailed and it gives insight into what was really going on. Um, many of you have probably seen the video or the, the film Gladiator. Um, which gives us a little glimpse of what it was like. But to read the, the documents from the time, um, it brings it even more to life. Um, the other reason I've chosen this is um, Felicity, or Perpetua actually wrote this down herself. So this is uh, not only a first-hand account of someone's own martyrdom, but um, it is written by a woman. Um, it, this is her journal leading up to her martyrdom. And then one of her friends carried on. Um, the writing of this after she had been martyred to pass on the story. So this is her first-hand account. It's uh, the earliest evidence of women writing that we have in Christianity. So I'm going to briefly, briefly tell you this story. I've linked to the writing itself in Moodle if you'd like to read it for yourself. Um, but here, here's Perpetua's and Felicity's story. Um, so <clears throat> Perpetua and Felicity, they were friends. They lived in a town called Carthage, which is in North Africa. And they were thrown in prison for um, not recanting of the Christian faith. Now, at this time, there was persecution under Septimus, uh, Septimius Severus in the year 202. And he, he was trying to bring the country together. And the way he saw that he could bring the country together um, is through what's called syncretism. And syncretism is bringing beliefs and, and assimilating them. You remember the old... Uh, Roman way. Well, he thought if he could bring all the religions together under one idea, which is the emperor needs to be worshipped, then the kingdom would come back together and they would be able to fight the Vandals who were um, um, and the Goths who were charging in from the north. So he's given people a chance to recant of whatever faith they had and assimilate themselves into the Roman faith. Well, Perpetua and Felicity did not recant, so they were thrown into prison and we're told that Perpetua was actually nursing her son at the time. So she, she was a, a, a new mother, um, and she had a baby who was still nursing. Now, her father tried to get her to recant for the sake of herself and her son. I mean, if your daughter, who had just had a child, was in prison, and she had a chance to get out of prison, wouldn't you want her um, to do whatever she could to get out of prison? Um, he actually says, quote, Spare your father's gray hairs and spare the infancy of the boy. Make sacrifice for the emperor's prosperity. And Perpetua says, I answered, I am a Christian. She stood by that creed. She stood by her faith that Jesus is Lord and the emperor is not. So her father did take her son away from her to save him. And she and uh, Felicity were in prison together. And, and she had a number of visions, uh, which you can read about if you read her um, autobiography. Now, Felicity was eight months pregnant, so she was in prison and still pregnant herself. And she delivered a baby in prison. Uh, it was a daughter um, who was in prison, and she took, uh, Perpetua took the both in as if they were her own. They, along with a few others, were then taken into the arena, and they were to be killed by a cow. Now, the cow was unsuccessful and ended up being killed by the sword. But Perpetua, this is a quote from her writing, Perpetua, that she might have some taste of pain, was pierced between the bones and shrieked out. And when the swordsman hand, swordsman's hand wandered still, for he was a novice, he wasn't very good at his job, and he didn't kill her with one strike, 
he had to do it again, and he had to slice her on the neck. Perchance so great a woman could not else have been slain, um, had she not herself so willed it. In other words, this is her um, writer of her diary is saying how strong Perpetua was in her faith. Um, we're also told that she was protecting Felicity in the arena. So that's just a short, brief description of one Christian martyr, uh, a strong woman um, in the faith in northern Africa in Carthage, who stood up for her beliefs, even though she had an infant child, even though she knew it would mean her death. There was something about this Jesus that said, He died for you, and therefore you should be willing to die for him.